everybody, and welcome to the MLG Studios for the world presentation. It's the premiere of Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Apocalypse DLC Live. I'm Chris Puckett, joined by former MLG Pro player and now MLG Call of Duty expert Revan. And Revan, boy, do we have a fantastic show lined up for the fans tonight. Oh yeah, we got. we're going to be showing off the four multiplayer maps from the Apocalypse DLC, which drops August 27th, and... If you're not, well, if you know friends that aren't watching the stream, you want to tweet it out and get them in here now. Absolutely, guys. Tell everyone, tune in to MajorLeagueGaming.com. We have a four-hour broadcast, and we're going to be showcasing the four brand-new maps coming out with Tuesday's DLC pack. We got it here Saturday night. I actually had a chance to play it just about two hours ago, and, boy, these maps are incredible. Revan, what's the map you're most excited to see this evening? Oh, definitely dig. If you play Call of Duty World at War, this is just like Courtyard, which was a fan favorite map. So you're going to see lots of fast paced action, and it's definitely a fan favorite map. All right, well, after Dick, we're going to be taking a look at Frost. Now, Fresh Snow meets explosive gunpowder on the snow capped European city. There's bridges across the top, canals underneath. Players are going to have to play on all different levels, and there's some great SMG gunfights you're going to be seeing on this, as well as some long-range AR battles that you see across on that main bridge. Yeah, also you got Pod, which is a failed utopian society from the 70s that was actually in Taiwan, so you might have visited that back when you were here, Kid Fuck It. Hey man, I was born in 86. <laughs> Get off but me. If you're a summon Shingo player, you're going to love this map. There are lots of different routes you could take around the perimeter, perimeter of the map, and if you like to sneak around, this map is suited to your playstyle. Yeah. Yeah, I was playing some free-for-all on this last night, an incredible map. Lots of different kind of side alleys that I think our players are going to find out midway through the game on this. But of course, you'll see lots of action down on that main street. But that takes us to our fourth map, Revan. We're going to be going to takeoff. You may know this one from the top-down looks of it, but it's been totally reskinned. Fans of Stadium from the original Call of Duty Black Ops First Strike DLC are going to find themselves at home on takeoff. Just like Stadium, all kinds of game modes are going to play great on this. We can have CTF, you're going to see some domination, and now we get a chance to see what Hardpoint is like on the takeoff map. Oh wow, that's exciting, and if you guys are wondering who we brought down to play these DLCs right in front of you, we got some local professional Call of Duty players here. We got the best of the best from the Northeast here, and fortunately, all of them were able to come into New York City today. Let's meet our contestants in seat number one. We're gonna be checking out the boys from the Red Squad. That is Assassin. You see him wearing his Quantic jersey, Robert Walsh, known for his win in 2011 at MLG Raleigh. He has an incredible assault rifle, one of the best with the M8A1. Yeah, sitting next to him is his teammate, Doug Martin, otherwise known as Sensor. He was the 2011 Black Ops National Champion. Yeah, Doug is so sick with the SMG. He's a fantastic S&D player as well. He's going to be one of the vocal leaders on this squad, mm -hmm. but there's another loud mouth on that team in seat number three. Who are we going to be seeing tonight? YouTube superstar. It's going to be Team Martin. Trevor Martin, you guys are probably subscribed to his YouTube channel. He puts out a lot of tips and tricks videos, and we're going to see how he stacks up against the pro players tonight. Yeah, Team Martin's going to have his hands <laughs> full with the boys, but he's got some help with them. Sitting in seat number four, we got the man. It's replays. Replays, one of the best communicators on the MLG Pro Circuit, currently the captain of FaZe. James Crowder is known not only for his SMG work, he can switch to an assault rifle at any time. And in our warm-ups, he was using nothing but sniper rifles and hatchets. Oh man, we're going to see some cool stuff tonight, but let's take a look at his first opponent, which is a former teammate of his. You got Marcus Blanks, Embos, and his best place in this season was fifth place at our most recent MLG Spring Championship. Yeah, Embos is known for his assault rifle play, but just like replays can switch over to mm -hmm. SMG role at any point. And he is going to be sitting next to Sender, an up-and-coming player. That is Troy Michaels from New Jersey. He's known for his AR play, but you are also telling me that this guy has in-game smarts. Oh, uh, yeah, you... This is a player you want to keep an eye on. He's definitely an up-and-coming player with the, in the scene, and he's currently playing for Team Sinister. And then finally, in seat number eight. Oh, excuse me. I just skipped over Blue Fire. <laughs> seat number seven, BL Fire. Blind Fire, BL Fire, whatever you want to call him. Mike Gushinok is one of the best ARs. He's only 18 years old, but he's 6'6", and... His height, not the most impressive thing about him, Revan. His assault rifle is he absolutely tore it up at our Anaheim tournament. 
placing fourth with his squad curse, and he's going to be playing with a brand new team, Impact, next weekend at PAX. Yes, yeah, sitting next to him, you got one of the most winningest players in the MLG history. He's the man behind the Complexity squad. It is Mr. X, Matt Morello himself. Now, I started with MLG back in 2004. Matt Morello was in the scene at that time. He's been playing every single first person shooter, every third person shooter, but now he's playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2, and he's playing it from the fifth man position, the coach of complexity. He will be a definite vocal leader for this squad, a strategist, and he's also going to be bringing gun skill to the table. You know he has one of the best shots in any game he touches. Well, Puckin, now that we've got to know our players, what do you say we uh, show off our first map here? I think it's time to get into the action. The players look ready, and we are going to kick off the evening with our our first game of the night. Revan, what map are we going to be checking out? Uh, we're going to be checking out Dig, and we're going to be playing some Capture the Flag action, so a bit of a throwback for you World at War fans off the start here. All right, some World, World at War map action, but now it's Dig, the archaeological site over in Afghanistan, and this one, in our free time playing it, I found it very, very so fun objective. to be playing with the assault rifle. What Capture were you using when you played, Revan? Uh, back in courtyard, it's definitely a submachine gun map. So in World at War, I was a big MP40 guy. So what do you say we kick it off with? It looks like T Martin's going to be our screen first, and he just got taken out there by Sender. Yeah, let's go over to Sender from our yellow squad, center part of Team 2 here tonight. And uh, he's rocking his beautiful little little star reticle. Some interesting cyborg camo here, as well as he's uh, rocking the peacekeeper play. on the map. And Sender, I love what he's doing. Getting the high ground early on. A lot of the players last night when we had some free play time were only down low. But it seems that these pro players immediately thinking about how can I use the map to my advantage. He's going to be taken down by the flag carrier, actually. And that is Sensor running in the first flag of the game for our red team as Sensor is going to put it in. Oh, he also gets himself a care package and a hunter kill to use here. So this is going to be a thorn in the side of his competitors here because you can get just about anything from this care package. As it looks like he's got a thermal LG on his back. But he gets taken out by Embo. Is he going to try to steal a care package? He is. Oh, let's go to Embos. Embos was able to pick that he up. Got a and he got a V-set out of it. What a huge care package pickup for him. And Embos is going to top that off with a two-piece, oh, taking out Sensor and T. Martin. So he's going to be working on a Hellstorm of his, or excuse me, a Hunter Killer of his own. Also has the Lightning Strike at his, his second score streak option. All right, so replays, he's going to be pulling out Embos' flag. So we're in a bit of a stalemate situation here, but he's got the uh -oh. sniper on missing the first shot. The v -sat is up in the air as Mr. X was able to clean up T-Market, but Embos just trying to stay alive. There you go, finds the flag carrier. So they're going to be able to tie this one up here, Pucket. All right, so great work there by Embos to get it home, and center seems to be pulling a flag, and that is going to be a 1-1 score. Sen Sender's going to be following Embos here, but we also have a leader. It looks like Bielfire is going to be the first in the action as they're pushing together down the middle. I really like the strategy we're seeing here from Embos and, and the rest of this second team. Well, let's go back on board with Embos as he's on a three kill streak. Of course, so close to that score streak, but he gets cleaned up just short of it. So now Blindfire, he's the man on your screen, just picked up two quick kills. And now they're putting on pressure over near Sensor's flag, so... We'll see what he could do here. All right, BL Fire, as you said, in some engagements. Has T. Martin kind of trapped back at the base. T. Martin challenging grenade coming, and the Semtex will not connect. Meanwhile, Sensor from the opposing squad is actually inside the uh, base here for team number two, and he's going to be trying to pull this flag, causing team two to come back and play some defense. Meanwhile, BL Fire, he can give his team the lead with this one. No one else at the base. This should be an easy cap. All right, so he's going to be running it in, but Lightning Strike gets called in from center. That's going to help out Blind Fire here. And just like that, Bucket, they take the lead with two minutes, 10 seconds remaining in your first half. Assassin now lighting up the kill feed, but Blind Fire, he's got score shoots to work with. A Hunter Killer as well as a care package. I like what we're seeing from Blind Fire. Look at, that Look at Mr. Smile. X while BL Fire is going to try and play some defense. We're going to jump on board with Mr. X. Just as I say that, he's taken down at the enemy base. Embos is up top, and he's using a sniper rifle to pick up some early picks. Looking for a second one that's replays with his flag. Embo's taking shots from behind, but great return there. Is going to get the flag back at his base, and there's still a war machine that looks like was just picked up either by uh, Mr. X or Sender there. I think Blindfire was actually the one that oh, took it, and I think he got a war machine out of it. So these players, I'm not sure. It looks like none of them have flak jacket on, so this war machine is going to be very effective as the flag was just pulled by Sensor. 
right, we are still on board with Mr. X to see what he can do. He will be taken down by T. Martin, the last one alive. And T. Martin is going to be the first victim of BL Fire's War Machine. Let's see what this grenade launcher can do on this new map dig. Already you see the flak jackets coming out, but BL Fire so accurate with that score streak is still able to get the kill. All right, so now it looks like they're trying to put on pressure near the enemy team's flag and courtyard, or dig as it's called, and now it's such a short map, close range. So the distance between flag to flag, it, you could run it in you know, just about maybe two or three sprints. Oh my goodness, and he played that one perfectly. Unfortunately, Embos, his teammate, called in a Hellstorm missile or lightning strike rather, and it looks like it took him out. Mr. X is playing some base defense. He's going to keep the score at 2-1. to one. Meanwhile, Embos, I have not lit up on your mini-map there in the bottom right. Embos will be attacking that flag, and he's going to be pulling while Matt plays defense. Can center clear him? Nope. It looks like the flag will be returned. 20 seconds left on the clock. This could end 2-1 to one unless our team featuring Assassin Sensor, Replace, and T. Martin can get aggressive really quickly. They do have three at their opposing team's base. And also Assassin, he's got the flag in hand. Five seconds remaining. It doesn't look like he has enough time, but nice trying the last ditch effort. Hopefully he could stay alive and preserve some of his progression towards his streaks, but he cannot. He gets taken out by Sender. So there you go, going into the half, it's going to be a 2-1 lead for Sender and company who's in your round any kill cam. You guys don't see how you get to see the players, but it looks like they're having a great time playing these new maps. Yeah, the players seeming pretty happy with that first round, but we're not done. There are two rounds to capture the flag. You think uh, Assassin and crew can pull back in this next round? I don't know. Let's go ahead and pop up our scoreboard and see how these guys are doing. I'm interested to see how T. Martin's stacking up against the guys. So at least he's doing better than Sensor. All right. Yeah, 4 and 10, 5 and 12. Sensor and T. Martin really need to step it up, maybe pull out some assault rifles. That seems to be the key weapon for Sender, who is on top of the leaderboard currently at 15 and 7. All right. So it looks like we got Assassin on your screen. He's starting things off quick, already on a two kill screen. Never mind. Here comes Sender, and he's the amateur player out of all of these guys and he's really making a name for himself here because he's leading the top of the leaderboard which is quite impressive against the players he's playing against. Yeah, Sender had a few rough matches at our last event in Anaheim but trust me he is going to be a player to look out for in the rest of 2013 as well as going into the next title in 2014 but for the time being we are checking him out on the DLC map dig. If you're just joining us we're going to be featuring all four of the new maps that are coming out on Tuesday. Make sure you get your copy, it drops Tuesday, August 27th. Currently, the oh, flag oh, oh. being run, though, by flag Sensor. That flag will be stopped momentarily by Mr. X. Can he get the return? No replays is going to keep this one alive. And here we go. Just like that, they're going to tie it up at two apiece with three minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. Oh, man. Embos was in a position to get the return. Does pick up two kills, but just too late as the flag does go in, Pucket. It's now all tied up two apiece. Let's not back on board with Sender because he's still leading the whole lobby in terms of kills. He's actually doing the objective work now he's got a flag in hand but wait sensor he's gonna be going for the counter oh he just destroyed the 100 killer with the EMP nice and here comes some Semtex action that flag will stay alive Mr. X and BL Fire making moves for it and both flags are now out BL Fire carrying the flag for team two team one is gonna have T Martin trying to keep it alive can he get the kills nice job by T Martin saving himself from the attacker from behind, that is going to keep both flags in action. And T. Martin, he really just needs his teammates to get the return. Replays trying to get sneaky to come up behind enemy lines. All right, so it looks like he's got to get past three players you see there on the minimap. And he's about to make his play happen, Pucket. So, oh, finds one here. He lets him pass. Genius. What a smart play. Oh, he's going to go in for the return right now. He finds him oh, inside the Oh, my cubby. goodness. Nice play. And T. Martin is going to sprint this one in. What incredible teamwork from Replace and T. Martin sitting next to each other. And Sensor's going to go for a fourth flag here for team number one. Really catching fire here in the second half. They've already capped twice, going for a third. Meanwhile, though, Sender's going to be pulling their flag for team number two. All right, and it looks like he's got great support from his teammates, but Assassin, it looks like he had a war machine right there taking out Embo, so Sender, he's got to be... Pretty careful when he's running this flag in an open area, but in the other side of the map, you saw replays. He's going to be the flag carrier for his team, and they're looking to go up by two flags here. Yeah, team one really pulling away. Can he get it in? Replays, he's juking and diving, and he is going to get that one in. Also, one kill away from getting his hunter killer, and uh, it looks like he will have some attackers coming his way from the edge. 
Will he catch Bielfire or will Bielfire see him laying prone behind that pillar? I don't think so. Easy kill here oh, for he replays. Him. He sees him right in front of you, Bloodfire. Oh no, replays. He didn't get the kill. Extra score that. plus the return. And now look how close he is to the lightning strike. Looks like he's got a UAV and a hunter killer ready for use. Team Martin also trying to get into the action here for team number one. Is going for another flagpole. Has some action in front of him. And down goes Team Martin as Mr. X is able to clean up some defensive kills. He's taken down though. Sender going for the flag in the middle of the map is going to keep this one alive. They're running out of time, Revan. Just 90 seconds left. And we've seen all kinds of different flag routes being employed by both teams. Embo's just a half second late to getting that flag back to his base. Yeah, so rough for his team because the other team called in a counter UAV so they can't see anything going on in their mini map, which we all know is so crucial whenever you're playing Call of Duty. That's where you get most of your information from. Now you can see that little kill sign moving. That is Team Martin moving with a fifth flag. BL Fire cannot allow him to get to the base. Great kill there. Can he get the return though? He sees the shots coming from the top balcony. Nice job. That's going to earn him the care package. Hunter Killer in the back pocket and now a Guardian as well. His teammate going for the flag was just cut down though by Sensor, who is currently on a three kill spree. Finally stopped by BL Fire, who is lighting it up with that Bloodthirsty. All right, he's got to put his Guardian in, wow. in a good position here. Nice kill there on the Assassin, but I want to see what he gets out of this care package because that could lead him to tie the game here if they're able to cap this flag here. Great shot by Blindfire taking out Sensor. Good team support as well. They're going to be able to cap this flag and he needs to get something good from his care package. BL Fire on a seven kill spree. Just got the flag back. It is four to three. Your final 26 seconds. It looks like Sensor is going to be pushing in. Playing a, uh, looks like just some base defense for the time being. Gonna let the opponent steal uh -oh. his flag, but did Sensor make a mistake there? Replays is running uh -oh. through, got away, and looks like Replays is gonna get them through the middle. Embos with the opposing flag uh -oh. is gonna get some shots down. That flag will be rallied by Center, but not enough time. It is gonna be Team 2 fighting back at the end, but actually... Was that Team 1 that just took that away? Team yeah, Martin Assassin's and Assassin's Team. Group? They took the win Woo! there on the dick capture the flag. And I got to take a look at the score, Ron, see how these guys matched up. Because you saw Sender. He was leading the lobby into the first half. They yeah, were looking so good. in the first five minutes. Yeah, they were looking so good. And then the tides just completely turned when we switched sides. So replays now on top. He's 20 and 21, it looks like. Also had two capsules in him. So he's doing everything for his team. And Sender did finish at 21 and 16. He had the most kills in the game. Guys, that is going to do it for game number one here from the MLG Studios. We'll be back with the first ever look at live gameplay from the map Frost. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends we're live on MajorLeagueGaming.com.